of the uh, operative delivery, we will talk about the operative vaginal delivery. Let's start with the forceps. The operative vaginal delivery contains mainly two items, the forceps delivery and the ventose delivery. The history of the forceps delivery comes back to the Chamberlain's family. They were the innovators of this uh, an instrument that made a revolution in the history of obstetrics. After the Chamberlain's, comes the Tarnier's idea that was to uh, split the mechanical grabbing of the fetal head between the forceps plates on which the operator doesn't intervene after their correct positioning from a mechanical accessory set of the forceps itself which is the tractor piece. Then Christian Keeland in 1915 advised, uh, devised the rotational forceps for deep transverse arrest. Pepper invented the Pepper forceps used in the breech uh, delivery in uh, delivering the aftercoming head in 1928. At last, Wrigley introduced short, light forceps with generous cephalic curve in 1935, and this is the main widely used forceps nowadays. Let's talk about uh, an introduction to the parts of the forceps. This picture shows you the diagram of the parts of the forceps. From above, the blades are either solid, fenestrated, or pseudo-fenestrated. Then, the shank, which connects the blades with the handle piece. The handle piece has different shapes according to the type of forceps, with lock. The types of lock may be English, German, sliding, or pivot type of piece. There are two types of curves of the forceps. The pelvic curve and the perineal curve. The pelvic curve inwards and the perineal curve outwards. The most important classification of operative vaginal delivery is outlet, flow, mid and high forceps. Nowadays we use the outlet and the low forceps only. No space or no uh, rule for the mid or high forceps in modern obstetrics. We should accomplish the prerequisites for forceps application. First of all, it should be vertex presentation. The cervix is fully dilated and the membranes are ruptured. The head is fully engaged. The exact position of the head can be determined so proper placement of the instrument can be achieved. Pelvis is deemed adequate by examination. Informed consent must be obtained and at last appropriate analgesia is in place. The maternal bladder has been emptied, adequate facilities and backup personnel are available, operator must have the knowledge, experience and skill necessary to use an instrument and manage complications that may arise. You must have a backup plan. There are over 700 types of forceps. The main three categories are classical, rotational and special types like the paper. Uh, there are some types that are commonly used. Uh, we will give short notes about each of them. The Samson forceps uh, are, uh, is the picture on the left. It's the most commonly used types of forceps in outlet delivery. It has elongated cephalic curve. Uh, it's used when substantial modeling of the fetal head is present. While the Iliad forceps on the right side has adjustable pin for regulating lateral pressure of the handles, so uh, it's used when the, um, there is minimal degree of molding and suitable also for outlet forceps like the sensor. Here you see two other types, two important types of forceps. On the right side, the paper forceps. Uh, uh, the special uh, criteria for the paper forceps is it has distinct perineal curve. So it allows for application to the upcoming head in breach from the abdominal surface. While the keeling forceps, which is the rotational forceps, it has small pelvic curve and a sliding lock. This allows for uh, both application, uh, both the rotation and traction in, the, in one application. Uh, it's suitable for head with little molding. The most common force of for rotational delivery helps correct asynchronism. 
The indications for operative vaginal delivery are either fetal, maternal, or inadequate progressive labor. Uh, the main uh, indication in the fetal part is the presumed fetal compromise to decrease the time of delivery. The maternal uh, indications are to shorten uh, and reduce the effects of the second stage of labor on medical conditions, such as cardiac, hypertensive, myasthenia, spinal cord injuries, and others. The inadequate progress uh, contains nulliparous women, lack of continuing progress for three hours uh, in the second stage of labor, uh, or two hours with regional anesthesia, multiparous women uh, when lacking continuous progress for two hours in the second stage of labor, or uh, without uh, regional anesthesia, or one hour without regional anesthesia, also in cases of maternal fatigue or maternal exhaustion. When must we not use the forceps? What are the absolute contraindications of forceps delivery? Uh, the first is non-vertex or brow. We cannot apply the forceps over any other thing than the uh, vertex. Unengaged head, incomplete cervical dilatation, clinical evidence of cephalopelvic disproportion, and also fetal flow agility. The relative contraindications for the operative vaginal delivery are unfavorable attitude of the fetal head, rotation more than 45 degrees from the occipital anterior to occipital posterior because the vacuum is not used for rotation, mid pelvic station, and at last fetal prematurity. Uh, what are the application principles and procedure? First of all, you must be familiar with the instrument being used. So, the training comes first. Rotation within one plane can only be done with forceps without a pelvic curve, so any other type other than the keelant forceps. When checking the application, the posterior fontanelle should be located midway between the slides of the blade, with the lambdoid sutures equidistant from the forceps blades. This is how we make sure that the blades are applied correctly. And there is another point, the sagittal suture must be perpendicular to the plane of the shanks without its length, throughout its length. Uh, at last, the fenestration of the blade should be barely felt and the amount of fenestration felt on each side should be equal. With a solid blade, no more than a fingertip should be able to be inserted between the blade and the fetal head, one finger breadth above the plane of the shanks. It needs a lot of practice. To make sure that the three points are there, like in the picture. Uh, there is a special situation for the forceps application for after coming head uh, in, the, in breech delivery. When do we use it? Uh, prophylactically, to prevent sudden compression and decompression of the after coming head, or in cases of arrest of after coming head. Um, there are a lot of types of forceps that can be used. The long paper forceps, it's special for the uh, delivery of the after coming head. We can also use the Samson or the Keeling forceps for the same. Here you see the paper forceps and its application from the abdominal surface of the baby and how the uh, least perineal curve help in its application. Uh, what are the complications of the forceps delivery? First of all, the maternal laceration uh, may be uh, minor or major. Also, for the baby, minor cephalic ocular trauma or retinal disc hemorrhage in some time. Sometimes, fetal complications reach up to fetal skull fractures, facial neurotic palsy, cephal hematomas, subapneurotic hemorrhages, intracranial hemorrhages, and scalp lacerations. When do we say that the operative vaginal delivery failed? And what are the causes? Let's start with the causes. The causes are that uh, uh, if you cannot apply the branches of the forceps, if the branches of the forceps do not lock, if the branches slip after application, while affecting rotation only blades rotate, extraction is not possible, there is morbidity to mortality to fetus or the mother. So the application before full dilatation of the cervix is one of the causes of the failed uh, forceps application, in cases of gross cephalopelvic disproportion, deep transverse arrest, undiagnosed hydrocephalus, contraction ring grasping the fetus. All these are causes for failed operative.
Hi, my name is Dr. Hadejan. This is a video. And I'll be bringing you this commentary for maternity training. What about vacuum extraction? The other type of operative vaginal delivery. The history of the vacuum comes back to James Young Sampson, who devised double valve piston with a metal cup-like breast pump. Then, coming Mumstorm in 1953, who described the most successful model, Pagliuzzi Apuzio introduced this elastic cup with metal traction. That's the modern upstream. The uh, most important types of the vacuum contain Mumstorm's vacuum extraction. The parts are the metal cup, traction chain, traction handle, pressure rubber tube, vacuum bottle, and vacuum. As you see here, the parts of the vacuum extractor in the pictures. The new soft cup bell shaped 6.5 mm produces symmetric, less cosmetic alarming capo succedinium and less scalp abrasions. The stylastic cups are pliable, softer, less dramatic, and safer. What are the types of cup application? We can use it in flexion, flexing media, flexing paramedia, deflexing media, and deflexing paramedia. This is the soap and elastic types of the vacuum extractor. This is the Kiwi vacuum device, widely used in many hospitals nowadays. When do we use the vacuum extractor? First, to shorten the second stage of labor in cases of maternal exhaustion, presumed fetal distress, accepted posterior positions, and to deliver the second twin of the head uh, if the head is presenting part. Um, it's non-conventional uh, indications like it can be used in cesarean section to deliver frank range and in compound presentation. Uh, what are the contraindications of the, for the vacuum extraction? Some are absolute and others are re uh, relative contraindications. The absolute contraindications are the uh, operator inexperience, you shouldn't use it unless you know how to do it, the inability to properly attach, inadequate trial of labor, high fetal head, malpositions, after coming head of the breach, known fetal coagulation defects. This is the situations where you should never use. What about the relative contraindications? Prematurity, intra-time fetal demise, congenital anomalies, and prior scalp sampling, increasing the blood loss and fetal anemia. There is a special term used in vacuum extractor, which is chignon formation. What's the chignon? A chignon is a temporary swelling left on the infant's head after a ventose suction cap has been used to deliver him or her. Uh, it's a French word meaning a knot of hair that's worn at the back of the head. Like you see in the picture, it's a collection of subcutaneous edema uh, at the side of vacuum application. How do we apply the vacuum extractor? A proper vacuum extraction depends on the, the accuracy of the cup application, the traction technique, the fet fetal cranial position, the cup design, and the fetal build. The patient is put in lithotomy position, Written informed consent taken, bladder is emptied, the position, station, and the attitude of the fetal head is verified, phantom application is performed before the attempt as a trial for success. Uh, you can see here the uh, graduation and the pressure needed, and on the left side, this is the flexion point. The flexion point is just anterior to the posterior fontanelle, just touching it. Uh, the, the, the flexion point is the place of the cup. The practitioner spreads the labia and introduces the bell-shaped cup by compressing and inserting it into the vagina while angling the device posteriorly, so trying to introduce it with, uh, with less, uh, least discomfort uh, available. When contact is made with the fetal head, the center of the cup is placed over the flexion point and symmetrically across the sagittal suture. This is the flexion point. After correct placement of the cup is confirmed, vacuum pressure should be raised to 100 to 150 millimeter mercury to maintain the cup's position. The edges of the cup should again be swept 
with the finger to ensure that no maternal tissues are entrapped. Then we apply suction of 500 to 600 millimeter mercuries. Uh, with lower suction pressures, uh, this increases the risk of pop-offs. So the, the cup is displaced easily. Pressure beyond 600 millimeter mercury increases the risk of fetal scalp trauma and cerebral, cranial, and scalp. The duration for uh, application, it's a maximum of two to three cup detachments, three sets of pools for the descent phase, three sets for pools for the outlet extraction phase, and or a maximum total vacuum application time of 15 to 30 minutes are commonly recommended. The most authors advising lesser time limits to decrease the uh, injury to the maternal or fetal tissue. When do we say it's failed procedure? When cephalopathic supportion is evident, incorrect technique, and large. To summarize the operative vaginal delivery, we should have proper double setup, informed written consent by the patient and the relatives, choose the right equipment, choose proper indication, rule out the contraindication, uh, fulfill all the prerequisites, attempt a phantom application before the actual application, supervision by qualified person, no force applied, it's just the access. If failed operative vaginal delivery, abandon the procedure, keep double setup ready for emergency lower cesarean section. This is a video showing you how to do the vacuum extraction. Thank you.